Pretty hot take. Pretty, pretty, pretty hot. Fiery. Yeah. <laughs>uh, wow, right? <laughs> I gotta do something more with my life. <laughs> no, you, your um, life is right here, <laughs> Nicholas Palealog. And I'm Nicholas Palealog. <laughs> and today we're gonna be talking to you about our top five second basemen coming into 2021. We already broke down the top five first basemen. This is the top five second baseman but before we get into that guys make sure to like comment subscribe hit the notification bell uh we just reached over 300 subscribers which was yes. awesome that's amazing um yeah uh and patreon too so far we're still yes. sitting at three patreon members um but three more than we had a month ago yes that's and, good uh, and again once more much appreciation to all of them let's let's get into break this. it down all right coming in there's five of them, of course, top five. Mm -hmm, Coming in mm -hmm. at the number five spot, we have Cattell Marte on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Mm -hmm. Now, Cattell Marte, when we, we, you know, we were both doing this research, we found that there was one, only one reason why Cattell Marte has made the top five list. Nick, what is that reason? 2019. You heard it there. It's 2019. Because in 2019, this guy exploded out of nowhere. Before, he played four seasons of just, what, how should we classify it, mediocre? Well, you here's know? here's the thing about Cattell Marte, um, and this is this is what was super interesting to me, and and I had to ask myself, okay, well, what, are, what are we asking ourselves right now on this podcast? We are asking ourselves, what do we think the top five second basemen coming into 2021 will be? Cattell Marte was absolutely fucking lights out in 2019 this man I'm, i got the numbers right yeah. here he had an average of 329 an on-base percentage of 389 and a slugging of 592 oh my God, that's disgusting 97 <laughs> runs 32 home runs and 92 rbis now what's super duper interesting about this is that he's never had a slugging over 500 in his career before and, and he no. didn't he didn't have one in uh in 2020 either it, it yeah. would drop back down to what's much more like his career average of like 409 like yeah low 400 yeah like that 2019 was such an outlier but it's also like you can't ignore it because mm -hmm. it's so recent and yeah. he's still 27 years old and he's only played six seasons so also the fact that there's no other real other good second baseman to kind of compete for that fifth spot it's going to go to Cattell yeah. Marte. Because, and and here's the thing. He didn't have a crazy great year last year. Like, he did still hit for a very nice average of 287. His on-base percentage was 323. That's about league average. And then the slugging was a little bit below league average at, at 409. Um, so, I mean, and only two home runs, by the way. Yeah, as well. literally. Like, uh, he, he, big steep drop off of oh. the 32 that he had. Oh, gosh. You want to hear? So, 2019, it, it, he had, and I, I love this stat. I broke it down in the first basement video. It's mm -hmm. the at-bats per home runs. Mm -hmm. uh, and he had 17.7 .7 home runs per at-bat in 2019. At-bats per home run. At-bats at, at per home run, yes. You always do that. I know, because it's because it's um, strikeouts per nine, and like mm -hmm. I reverse them. Um, so, then, in his compared to his rest of his career, it's 38.7. Yeah. So... That was ridiculous. Yeah, much, much less of a power guy and much more of an average guy. And, yeah. And and here's the thing, you know, I feel like right now we're almost hating on on him a little bit. Right. Um, but I guess for me, it's it's just simply that those numbers going from 592 slugging when you've never been over 500 slugging. And keep in mind, guys, too, he he had almost close to a one OPS in yeah. 2019. Oh, yeah. And he's never been over 800 and, again, <laughs> did not do that in 2020. It's just the fact that those numbers are so, so way in left field. Um, and he's playing second base yeah, and they're so way in really left field. Yeah, really far away. Uh, and it's literally like, across it's, the it's, diamond. I don't, I don't see him repeating that again. No. However, I, I'd love for him to prove me wrong. Yeah, however, if, if he does, it gets similar to what he did in 2019. He's certainly going to move up that list. Oh, yeah. You know? Way up that list. Way up that list, for sure. So, coming in. At number four, mm -hmm. we've got dramatic page turn. Yeah, get that, get that. Tell Br yourself. 
Brandon Lau coming in. He's played three seasons for the Tampa Bay Rays. Here, pause, pause for one sec. Yes. Okay. I, I, I was making this mistake. I don't know if this is a mistake or not. Is it Brandon Lau or Brandon Lowe? Eh, I always called him Lau. I feel Me like, too. Yeah. But then the, when you said it, I was like, I feel like I remember people saying Brandon Lowe. Guys, I feel like, comment I feel down like below hear, yeah. if it's Lau or Lowe. I don't know how you're going to do that. I feel that, like but. Buck Martinez is like, Brandon Lau. But maybe that's the accent. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? I could be completely talking out of my ass. Yeah. Uh, who knows? But Brandon Lau, you know, second baseman for the Tampa Bay Rays, 26 years old. He has a career, very short career, mind you, mm. uh, only 618 at-bats. He's a career average of 262 and on base at 342. The slugging is 513 and the OPS is 855. Now, what sticks out about Brandon Lau compared to anyone else, he is the best second baseman, in this top five list at least, that has uh, the best second baseman at the at-bats per home run. Yeah, no, he definitely has the most power. I was, As you were saying that, I knew that's where you were going, and I yeah. was thinking about... Uh, some of the other guys in this list. And no, Brandon Lau, for sure, from the small sample size that he's shown us anyways, does have a lot of power. You know, in 20, uh, or this year, this past year, 14 home runs, and then in 2019, 17. Mm -hmm. And keeping in mind, he only played about half a season's worth of at-bats in 2019. So if you were to factor that out to a full season, you're looking at uh, 34, math? Yeah. 34 oh, no, home 30, runs? Wait, 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 16 and 14? Uh, well, he had he had 17. 17. Wait, that's more than that, isn't that's it? That's 33. 33 home Wait, 16 runs? 16 and 17? Yeah, 33. 17 times 2. Isn't that... Wait, that's, 17, that's 17 34. and 17. That's 34. Wait, I thought you said yeah. 16. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. He had home runs. He's going to hit a lot of home runs if he had a whole year. You know, <laughs> his, his percentile uh, in expected slugging, he's ranked 94th percent. And his barrel percentage is 98, so he really hits the ball hard. And this popped out to me. Uh, his at bats per home run, I love the stat that, that I always make up making these videos, mm -hmm. uh, is 16.7. That's better than Freddie Freeman. That's better than Jose Abreu. Really? Eh? Yeah. For home runs? For, for home runs for that bat. bat. Hmm. Yeah. That's better than both of those guys. Mm -hmm. However, again, small sample size, yeah. but if he continues to do this, you're going to see him become an all-star further down his career multiple yeah. more times and be a rock star on that Tampa Bay roster. Yeah, it's a uh, he's definitely one of those guys that I'd be I'd be watching out for. Um we mm -hmm. might sadly have to see him for Ugh. many years to come. God. Um but once again, we cannot stress how small the sample size yeah, is because seriously. realistically if if he'd been doing this, like what he's doing right now for, you know, like three full se or two full. like even two full seasons, yeah. like full seasons then he'd he'd have to be far higher on our list, yeah. um, and uh, and right now we just have him at four because of that sample size. But if if he comes out right now in in twenty twenty one, and uh, and keeps on this pace, then he will also skyrocket up yep. the rankings. Absolutely. Now coming in for our number three spot, mm -hmm. we have. Sorry, coffee. <laughs> Ozzy Albies. Woo, Ozzy Albies on the Atlanta Braves. Yeah. Second baseman. Ozzy Albies has had four seasons, and I knew he was young, but this still shocked me that he's only 23 years old. Yeah. And he's already got an all star appearance. You know what's absolutely messed up <laughs> is uh, like he is making like far more money in one year than I've ever made in my whole life. And oh, I'm yeah. 22. And he's on a horrible contract, too. Yeah, yeah. He's on he, a horrible contract. He got really snuffed. Uh, do you remember his contract off by heart? I think it's like seven years for, and and I'm going to, I'm making this up. Like this yeah. is, I don't think this is what it is, but it's something like seven years, like 30 something. Like it's, right, it's, it's like something really along tiny. those lines, like seven years, like 37. Yeah. Seems to stand out to me. Um, it's, it, it is around that. It's not exactly that, but yeah. that for a guy who's 23 years old and, and who has done what he's done so far is, <laughs> well, uh, I mean, a he, rip off. Yeah. A rip off. <laughs> he, he, rip off. He, he should be entering his arbitration years and like getting big dollars. Like, you this know is, what I mean? this is the type of deal that we want to have, uh, like Biggio on. Yeah. And, seriously. and I think that Ozzy Albies is better than Biggio. Oh, and I gosh. still think that that would be a steal on oh, Biggio. Absolutely. So, Atlanta, Ozzie, you're doing okay. Seriously. Ozzy Albies, his career has been 279 uh, batting average, 330 on base, 473 slugging. He's not known as being a slugger. No. But, you know, what the really good run, what the really good numbers are, are his runs. He can score runs. He can get on base. He can score. Um, and his expected batting average is exactly 
where it is. You know, there's no like short sample size, like skewing his numbers. No, his mm. expecting batting average in 2020 was still 272. So he's exactly where he needs to be. So he's we got steady. unlucky by a point zero one. Literally, <laughs> yeah, like literally, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's no question there that to to me that Ozzy Albies is gonna be first of all have a long career in Atlanta first mm -hmm. and have a very good successful year. Career. Yeah, and and he is he is definitely one of those guys who is going to be up there. I think for many years um, as far as like leaders in runs. Uh, he's going to bat at the top of that lineup. Um, he should at least. Usually they put him in the second, yeah. the the two hole, but um, like he was struggling a bit last year, so they moved him down. I think he dealt with a couple injuries. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But usually they have him in that two spot, and uh, there's just so many runs to be had there on Atlanta, and I think that this guy is a big part of of that young core. It's him, yeah. and it's Acuna, and... And that's really scary. And oh, and yeah. Dansby Swanson. <laughs> oh yeah, you that's, always uh, forget about that. That guy could yeah, just blow I mean, up at any moment. Literally, and uh, yeah, Ozzy Albies is absolutely somebody that I wish that we had on our squad. Um, However, we got Kevin. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> this is no. This is no like anything yeah, against yeah, Kevin. Yeah, yeah, no disrespect. But this guy's younger than Kevin. Yeah, that's it. which Two is truthfully younger. like. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. are you kidding me? Like, what? Yeah. Um, and he's already had full seasons and all star appearances. And, uh, like, and oh I do think gosh. that, like, he's had a, like, quote unquote, like, down year for his yeah. career <laughs> stats last year while hitting 271. Yeah. I think that that will probably uh, level out coming into this year yeah. and he'll be back at that, like, 280 range that he normally yeah, hits. Yeah. Like, like you said, he only played 29 games because of injury. Like, he, he had that problem. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I have, no, I have no doubt that Ozzy yeah. Albies hard to, hard to put back. a lot of weight on that. Yeah, you know, after you have, after you've done it for two years. In a exactly. Row, so. Yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna penalize him for one kind of down year. Do you know who I would penalize? Who the number two guy? On I was spot. literally I was literally thinking about that transition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what would you what would you what would you penalize him for? Oh, I'd penalize him. You know, he's he's at the for plate. being a for being a trash throw, being a trash being an ass trick. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jose Altuve that's what we're talking about yeah. he, he's <laughs> coming in our number two spot now I know a lot of people might be like whoa 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 hold up hold up I'm exiting this video right now but let me let me tell you look Jose Altuve you're thinking about the cheater you're thinking about his bad year last year after they got caught for cheating you know yeah he hit what was it here boom he hit Duh. Where is it? He hit I'm 219. Missing. Thank you. He hit 219 last year in Europe. Yep. That's because of cheating. However, I look, I'm not the person to be like, from an emotional standpoint, being like, that's, you know, he was just upset. Well, I think Jose Altuve actually, like, I remember reading some reports that he actually was struggling with the, like, the whole season just mentally. And like, I mean, who wouldn't, you know, Jose Altuve probably was a really great guy and then got roped into the system and cheated and he went along with it. And then he probably regrets it. And then he said he kind of like stuck in his head all year. However, we're not, we cannot forget the years he put up. Five straight years of All-Star hitting above 313 every single year. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's unreal. Too it, good to be true. Almost and, like he's a cheater. <laughs> see, and that's exactly the argument people okay, are going to make. Well, here, here's, you know? the, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Like... Could you and and I'm not I'm yeah, not yeah. saying like I don't know Dick I know nothing yeah. okay about his cheating scandals and whatever yeah. but could you not believe that maybe he was cheating during that time like for instance another person who has been caught for cheating very recently Cano who yeah. was initially caught for cheating said oh my god oh my god I'm super sorry but this is never gonna happen again and then got caught for cheating again yeah. Fair. I'm definitely not saying that's what he, he's been cheating how, his whole career, yeah. but how, I'm saying it's possible. However, however, that it is a you know obviously drug related you know cheating, different form of cheating, different form, different of, form cheating. of cheating. Like one was an organizational structure, like mm -hmm. it was like multiple people involved with the whole organization. Whereas yeah. this is just a guy after a workout putting a needle in his arm or in his ass, wherever he wants to put it. Wherever he puts it. <laughs> let's let's move forward though with this conversation. Assuming that uh, these numbers are not heavily influenced yeah. by cheating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in 2019, uh, he actually had the most homers of his career uh, with 31. That's not a crazy, crazy amount. But yeah. when you factor in the fact that this guy has been hitting regularly over 300 for many, many years, and uh, he still hit 298 that year with a slugging of 550, 
Um, we're only one season removed from that, and yeah. that was a really nice year for Jose Altuve. He is getting older. Um, he's not someone that I'm targeting in fantasy, but I still right. think that when he comes into the league, he's he should be considered uh, yeah. somebody to to be scared of. Yeah, that's sure. And and here's yeah exactly like he's still 30 years old and. When, you know, uh, when you say targeting fantasy, it's like, yeah, because I still have this thing in my mind. Like, yeah, he kind of suffered last year. I'm rather I'm going to take an Albies or a DJ, you know, reach for them in my in my, you know, second base position. Potentially. Yeah. Um, however, Jose Altuve. Here's here's the thing. I'm going to break it right here. If he repeats what he did last year, I think we can slide him out of the top five spot going into next year. If he were to, for a full season repeated 220 average mm -hmm. i think it's like okay it could be age it could be mental you know like he's in his head now whatever it might be i think it's safe to slide him out but not yet i believe one year removed no no not I, yet. I don't think so either. not in a shortened season like that exactly. like yeah and that's the thing like how much weight can you put on a shortened season like this how much yeah, weight can seriously. you seriously like if if we had if we had an entire year if there was an entire year that happened and one guy only played 60 games of that entire year and even if he popped off or if he slumped, that would be chalked up to nothing. It would be chalked up to this guy had a very, very, very short sample size and either did great or suffered, but we can't walk into this assuming that's what he's going to be. And, and that's yeah. what this season is for a lot of it, you know, because if we were going on last year alone, if it was a full year and, and Jose Altuve yeah. hit 219, Ooh. I would be far, far more concerned. Yeah. He might not be in this top five and Brandon Lau or Brandon Lowe, or whatever the hell his name <laughs> is, would be higher because he mm -hmm. did way better. He, he did better than a lot of these guys last year, yeah. you know? Um, but it was only 60 games, and Jose Altuve's been elite for his whole career, and I think that uh, being, what, 30? 30, 30. 31? 30? 30, yeah. Being 30, there's still a lot of time left to repeat what he's done in the yeah, past. Absolutely. Would absolutely agree. He's our number two man. Mm -hmm. And now, for our number one man... You might have guessed it if you've been watching this podcast for a while now mm -hmm. and have been seeing all the rumors that we want this man. His name is... He, uh, he likes to he likes to make the beats, bro. You know? <laughs> Can you imagine, like, he literally... His name is literally just DJ. I mean, that's, that's it. That's what I refer to him as. But <laughs> our number one guy is DJ LeMay. LeMay. All right, DJ LeMay here. Wow, I mean, this podcast is so cringy. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you say it like that, <laughs> <laughs> just click away, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to hear about DJ LeMay who you came here for this moment. I mean, you saw him on the thumbnail, but that's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, I wonder. Oh, who it could we we like... didn't talk about him. <laughs> um, so DJ LeMay who ten seasons he's played in the league, three time All Star. Last year he was the batting champ, and in the year before that he was second runner up to the batting champ. And yeah, his career is 305 average. Mm -hmm. And that tells the whole story right need there. You, need you say more? Need you need, say do I more. need to say any more? Actually, yeah. I could. What top 100 percentile in strikeout rate mm. next to Tommy LaStella, apparently. Wow. Really? Wouldn't eh? have expected wouldn't that. Wouldn't have guessed. You could have given me 50 guesses and I wouldn't have gotten right? that. Right? Right? Tommy LaStella, come to the Jays. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a whiff rate, you know, he, he's in the top 97. His whiff rate is only 11. 0.2%. And expecting batting average, of course, is, is really high with 315. Yeah. And then that's it. Now, like, well, what else do you want to hear? Not, let's <laughs> not forget either that he's also pretty good defensively, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. He's great. You know, and that's something that we haven't really talked about in this video. We've been looking primarily at the bat. Yeah. But DJ LeMayhew is is just a he's a he's an overall great baseball player. You know, you can slot him like he's great to go lead off. But, you know, would anyone complain if he was batting third? I don't think so. Um, no. You know, and he's great defensively. You can move him around the diamond, and it's just like, like it, right now for me, as far as like who's got who's the best like average hitter in the league, it's him. Yeah, and the only one who's even remotely close is Tim Anderson. Yeah, you know, and, and those guys are just in another tier right now of being able to to hit the baseball consistently. And oh, and Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman is like pretty. Yeah, yeah, that's something. true. Oh yeah, he God. was doing pretty crazy, but. But this is a guy who's been doing that, you know, year in, year out. And there's never been a time where his average has not been good. 
Yeah, you know? it's all, like in his early parts of career, it bounced around, but you could see how over time he was just getting better every mm -hmm. year. And then the last two years, I mean, if you've been living under rock, you don't know who this is, but like he's been the one of the best. Yeah, he's been you know? literally one of the best, man. And well, he is the best second baseman in the league, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, and literally after after I did this research, after I looked into this some more. Um, I was just like, damn, man, like, wouldn't it just be great if we could go out and get him, you know, oh my wouldn't God. it just be great if we could make that happen? Like initially <sighs> yeah. I was like, oh, you know what? He's getting a bit older, but who cares, man? Like yeah, who cares? He's getting better with age. Like, the best, like, literally the best second baseman in the league right now. Literally. So says Blue Jays today. That's right. And uh, no one else. No one. Everyone's like, no way. You got to check these guys out. They said yeah, DJ's yeah. the best. Pretty hot take. Pretty, 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 pretty hot. Fiery. Yeah. Um, we're not having the graphic for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, keep uh, I'm, I want to flash it just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yo, like that guy, he would, he would make our team so much better. And I'm so, so upset that I think that the Yankees are probably going to, probably going to get him back. Yeah. I'm probably yeah. going to get him back. On probably. Team. Like, I mean, who, Yankees can get whoever they want. But I mean, you know like, who we got? We got Kevin Biggio. Yes. And he was very close into making oh, this list. Yes. We were looking for reasons yeah. to put him into this list. And it just came down to the fact that his average is not... His average is literally yeah. average, as in MLB average. He hit for the yeah. MLB average. You yeah. Know? And and literally, like, it, like, I know he's got power. And the thing is, like, I know he drives and runs and creates production. But, like, his percentile numbers don't show that. And it compares it, like, with his, like, expected slugging and his, like, barrel percentage is not that mm -hmm. good. But the only standout stat that's so like eye popping is his walks. It's crazy. I mean, he led the league in uh, in uh, chase percentage, like lowest chase percentage yeah. in the league. So like, you're really good at that, Kevin. Keep well, it up. Here's the thing, man. I made a hot take last to coming into last season, and I yeah. said he's gonna lead the league in walks. Now he didn't do that, mm. but he was pretty. He, he was, was close. Always, he, was he was always close. up there the entire time. Yeah. If I was to make that take again, I don't think that's a hot take anymore. No, it's not. You know, it's, it's it's no not. longer a hot take. It's like the word is out. Kevin Biggio is crazy when it comes to taking a walk and being able to take a pitch. Yeah. Um. Now, I think coming into this year, I keep saying this. I keep thinking that people are going to do this. But I'm like, now, if I am a pitcher, if I am a, a coach facing the Blue Jays, I'm telling my pitcher, I'm saying, you need to you need to attack with the fastball down the middle and we're gonna see once they do that if he can hit yeah and like he was i remember in his 2019 year i saw a lot of that where he would just and even a little bit in 2022 got a little bit better but like he wasn't being aggressive enough on the first pitch mm -hmm. where he would it would just boom right by and it's like yeah keep attacking him until he does it because yeah. the strikeout rate i know it's not like horrible but it's like yeah it's like average around average and you know Kevin, just get ready to hit that ball. Here's man. the thing, you bro. Like you gotta, you gotta. Once, once he can prove to the rest of the league that he can hit, then like yeah. it's just it, it's a cycle, right? It's like okay, like he can walk. We're not gonna get him. We're not gonna get him chasing us right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what do we do? We <laughs> we got to attack. Oh shit, he can hit us as well. Yeah. What do we do when you're now? Dangerous. And then you're now you're dangerous. Now you're you you're in, you got them in their head. And uh, we're one step away, I think, from having Kevin exactly. Biggio haunting the dreams of, of these elites. Exactly. And you look at all the best players in, like, walks every year. It's like Mike Trout, Bryce Harper, you know, I, those are the two that pop in my mind right away. And the reason why they're also great hitters, number one, they're talented, but number two is because now they have, the pitcher has to pitch to them. Mm -hmm. And look, and they do damage. So, Kevin, I hope your development can continue along. And in 2021, you start damaging them yep. you start and, damaging um, if you them. do then you'll make our top five lift yes coming into 2022 yes damage them exactly yes guys uh what do you think about this top five list uh is it even remotely close to what you guys thought i know that we left a couple people off here like i was looking at mike moustakas potentially putting him up here yeah i eventually did not do that yeah i think um, he's 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 an example where he's a little bit more removed a little bit more removed prime time. Time. you know okay. however he did. He was an all star in 2019, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Um, maybe, maybe it was he a bench, probably a bench all star. Uh, yeah, probably, well, yeah. probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, let us know what you guys think. Is there anyone on this list who didn't make it? 
let us know in the comments down below. Mm-hmm. And now Nick will talk while drinking a glass of water. Yeah. And also make sure to check us out on Spotify, Breaker, Anchor, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. Also the Instagram, always popping off. Make sure to subscribe here. And Patreon, once yes. again. Patreon, 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 Patreon. It's $3 a month, and you can ask us any question that you want, and we'll <laughs> answer. I mean, we literally answered one about hot players. Yeah, so who's the hottest player in the NBL? In the NBL. Like, what? That what? Is, you but, could, uh, literally, it's open. It's open, guys. <laughs> for real, for real. Thank you guys so much for watching. And go Jays, go!